We all know the Good Brothers care about money. That's why they probably subscribe to NordVPN.com slash Fightful. I can't endorse it on their behalf because I don't know for sure. I just assume they do. I assume that they are smart enough to go, you know what? I need NordVPN.com slash Fightful. If I don't like it, I get a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's already got a great deal plus an additional month free. Why wouldn't I subscribe to it? I can change my virtual location with just one click. I can use their threat protection to avoid online trackers, malware, annoying pop-up ads. You know they don't want to sit through pop-up ads. You know they don't. They're the good brothers. Not only that, but NordVPN.com slash Fightful is the fastest VPN in the world. It works on all of your devices, your phone, your tablet, your PC, your laptop, even your router and your TV. NordVPN.com slash Fightful helps you block a lot of intrusive things on that unsecured Wi-Fi when you're traveling, like those fellas do an awful lot. Check it out at NordVPN.com slash Fightful. <clears throat> What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp here with Fightful. Here with a couple names, you know. I feel like uh, we interview them once every few months. They flew all the way to Poughkeepsie just to do this Zoom just with us. Zoom with you, yeah. Neither of their internet connections were working at home, and they said, you know what? We're, we we got to do this interview with Sean Ross Sapp. We're we gonna fly need to get to Poughkeepsie. We got to get to Poughkeepsie where the internet is good. I can't even pronounce, doing? I can't even pronounce the city. I, mean, I, I flew all the way, I flew here to what? Where? Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. <laughs> to, to interview with Sean oh, Ross I'm getting, I'm getting all Ross's emails right now while we're on this thing. I'm not supposed to be reading these company-wide emails, Ross, but I am. Uh-oh. I'm oh, ready for it. Go. Give Thanks me for having us. Give me, somebody's getting a raise. His name's us. Listen, listen, I... <laughs> What are the chances of Ross being inducted in the Bullet Club? He's a former NWO member, technically, I think. He really is. Yeah, he was telling me some big Kev stories when we were going to the Walgreens this morning to get some brotherly supplies for this interview. So I, I used to, I, I see, I put him over in my interviews. I used to read his WCW magazine articles all so the time. So did I. There you go. So did I. This is a real story. Oh, so, Ross isn't just a media guy. No, I mean, yeah, I guess if you write for a magazine, you are a media guy. He was also a WWF guy. Because I remember standing outside of the Igloo in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I was about 12. And this guy came up with a WWF shirt on. And I said, are you Ross Foreman? And he told me to go fuck myself. But I'm not. I never told Ross that. It just popped into my head. And I, But there was no, like, I don't like him. No reason for it. Go fuck well, the, the people are the people are already bored now because no one knows who the fuck Ross Foreman is. Well, he's right there. Hey, come on. <laughs> they know who he is. And anyway... Well, okay, you know what? We, we've seen all the, the comparisons, Bullet Club and uh, NWO. Sure. NWO had Kyle Petty as their race car driver. Who would you guys pick as your race car driver? Jeez. Oh, I mean. Davey Allison. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm <laughs> so gonna, I can remember. <laughs> I, I remember Rusty Wallace. Didn't he have, didn't he have the Miller Lite car? Yeah, he did. We'll, we'll, we'll take the Miller Lite car. That's cool. Rusty, Rusty also, Wallace. Though, I got to be honest. I, like, I love Jeff Gordon because he was always winning. Everybody hated him. I mean, like, well, that's kind of like us. We always we, we're always around and always and, winning, and, and people, everybody, everybody hates, hates us. Everybody hates us. Rusty Except Wallace is like sixty five now. I wonder if he would. I don't think he'd be that. He could throw it up. Is he Jeff could. Gordon sixty five? No, not Jeff Gordon. Jeff not Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Rusty Wallace. Oh. Jeff Gordon's probably in his fifties. He's he's fifty. He's just now fifty. He could still get it done. I think. I mean, November fourth, fifth, and sixth when. Pit Row at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, presented by the Big LG Doc Gallows. You'll see professional wrestling and NASCAR racing together. You can see it live. Give me Jeff Gordon, man. I mean, Jeff Gordon's one of those guys who retired because he wanted to, not because he needed to. How about yeah. this? As I look him up, remember five... my Jeff Gordon story? No. Here's a, here's an exclusive. I just told you about. I told you that I'm talking shop. Well, you you gotta remember things that you tell me on talking shop. <laughs> I'm usually not actually gonna remember it. So when I was in developmental. <laughs> There was also a developmental race car driver that lived next door to me. And one day he had a couple too many oat sodas and he kept bragging about having Jeff Gordon's phone number. So oh, no. I immediately extracted it from his phone. And then when I would have too many oat sodas, I would prank call Jeff oh, Gordon. Okay. Oh, and I thought no. it was so funny because I would just do it because you get his voicemail, then you get the pop from your friends. Yes. And then one day Jeff Gordon answered the phone. He goes, why the fuck do you keep doing this? And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. Sorry, man. <laughs> so was that your response? Was sorry, man? Yeah, pretty much. Because at that point, he had me. <laughs> I did not expect him to answer. 
So, I mean, was this a landline or was it a cell phone? Because It I mean, was a I, cell phone, but I was like, "There's no, he's not going to answer on no number ever. But sure, I guess when it, when it calls you every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for six months straight with just hammered ramblings, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out the wash. Oh, amazing. Five foot eight, Jeff Gordon. I expected him to be taller. Is he five eight? Five eight. Man, we are so off topic. I love it. He made his he made it, he made his money and got out, baby. He's good. That, that's true. Uh, we have impact rebellion. By the way, I don't think I even introed you guys. It's Carl oh, Anderson, it's Gallows, it's the Good <laughs> Brothers. Anyways, are we interview are we interviewing you or what? Yeah, I have a few questions for you. Does it feel good to have an interviewee on the show who actually knows your proper last name that after knows- knowing you for years? Well, I mean, you had to tell him on Sean camera. Ross Rap, he was calling. Look at that. Like <laughs> That, that's going to be the name of Emilio's new show that you all will actually go on. <laughs> yeah, Wrestle Rap. See? Yeah, that, that's Keep what's going to happen. Toes, we got Impact Rebellion. It is April 23rd in Poughkeepsie mm. at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. As I look at the card, it looks like you guys are going to probably land in that uh, World Tag Team title match. I don't know why you wouldn't. I don't uh, how, how are you looking forward to, to Rebellion? It's become a bit of a tradition for Impact Wrestling. Well, it's at the Mid-Hudson Coliseum, a building rich in professional wrestling history, but oddly, not rich in good brother history. We've never yeah. teamed up in really? there. We've never been there together. And uh, the match is complete bullshit. Uh, <laughs> us, who have been Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions for over 350 days, now we have to go through eight other teams to secure what's rightfully ours? Bullshit move by Impact Management. I'm saying it here. So when we beat all those teams and send them packing with the Magic Killer, a one, two, three, and a just two sweep, they can all suck it because we will be tag team champions for the eighth time. Uh, Carl, are you also in agreement that this is uh, bullshit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I feel like that we should have honorary Impact World Tag Team Championship uh, titles made for us. Anyway. Whether we win or lose, just they should yeah. just give them to us. To but I feel like we brought we brought on so much. Uh, sorry, my wife is calling right here. Look at that, look at that beautiful picture. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we 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 brought so much love and, and steam to Impact Wrestling that I feel like we deserve we deserve we deserve it all, Sean. So I mean, Impact's Impact's given you a hell of a card at Rebellion, a historic yeah. card, a historic market, eighty miles north of New York City, and then. Just to dishonor the boys like this, just to give us yeah. such a bullshit thing to have to handle. It's an injustice. So uh, we're going to have to make make this wrong right. But I would say, you know, tune in, tune in to watch us win our championships back. 100%. Yeah. 100%. If you haven't seen Impact Live, Sean, you follow the show. It's been getting better and better. The multiverse matches Dallas, Texas at WrestleCon. I think we proved that. We had every promotion under one roof. That night in Dallas, uh, impacts can't miss right now. You don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know who you're going to see next. Figure out how to watch it. Impact on Access TV, the ultimate insiders on YouTube, Fight TV, pay-per-view. Uh, we got a lot of kick-ass content coming your way. Uh, impact's a place to be right now. You, you mentioned the multiverse. I mean, this show is practically another one of them. You got Jay White right. on the show from New Japan, Tomohiro Ishii. Deanna Perrazzo is the AAA champion. Jonathan Gresham is with AEW ROH now. He is the ROH world champion. Then you got people that every single week you're going to see pop it up on like GCW and high level independent yes. promotions as well. Like it is, it is insane. But I got to ask the hard question. If you say this is bullshit and you're mad at impact management, does that mean Scott Demore is now out of the Bullet Club because we know he is their most prominent member? Well, we got those brand new Bullet Club jackets. And before he goes on TV and makes an A-team gauntlet match, he said, hey, boys, where's my Bullet Club jacket? Well, I'll tell you where it is. It's with your freaking stupid gauntlet match. Well, you know, I think Scott forgets that he's a Bullet Club member. <laughs> he, he was inducted a long time ago. He was. He's, a, he's actually an OG. People, people 2014, he was inducted. 2014 he at did, the Cebu Dome. He did a cartwheel on a toe touch. I have it on film. So I spoke to Adam Cole recently, and okay. I said, I said, do you think that the Bullet Club Civil War will ever truly be wrapped up with a bow on it? Because, I mean, you got a bunch of guys in AEW, a bunch of guys in Impact, New Japan. Now you got Cody, Balor, and AJ and in WWE. WWE. He yeah. said, ideally, I would like everybody to get along and us be, to be the greatest, hugest faction of all time and just beat everybody up. He's like, but also, I got my buddies over here. What do you guys want to see? Because, I mean, we saw 
I mean, you guys, you guys kicked a couple of other OGs, or at least one other OG and his brother, to the curb recently. Man, you know, where would you do that? Where would you do it? Is That's it at WrestleMania? Thing. Is it at Wrestle Kingdom and a sold-out Tokyo Dome? There's so much. This thing that started in two. Larry Otto Pro. Larry Otto Pro. <laughs> Larry Otto. One of the top promotions in the whole world if you're not watching it. <laughs> what the fuck have you been doing? Uh but nine years in the making, still going strong. They can say what they want. It's, it's hotter now than it's ever been. And uh, we have a crystal ball here at the Hyatt in Poughkeepsie. And uh, it's about to get hotter, so keep watching. I really? say, I say, you know, we, we left New Japan and went to WWE. We didn't really change anything. We were throwing the, we were throwing the two suites forever. It was blessed upon us by Big Sexy and Scott Hall. Rest in peace, good brother. Yes, sir. Um, and we never stopped throwing them up. I mean, I, I feel like we uh, we repped we repped the Bullet Club from you know day one, and, oh. and now we're back, you know, wearing the colors again. We never took them off. That was a, the misconception. A Bullet Club Civil War would be massive, and I got a weird feeling there's a couple more reunions coming up soon, and uh, hmm. you never know what can happen. Hmm. Very interested. So, uh, word emerged recently that. AJ re-signed with WWE, re-up with WWE. I know that your all's deals were supposed to be up near the same time. How did you feel? Because, I mean, from, from the rumors out there, he got a pretty sweet deal. Like, he I mean, a, he deserves a sweet deal. Yes, he does. Michael deserves a sweet deal. The Good Brothers deserve a sweet deal. In July, I'm sure Impact or someone else will give us something very sweet because we're sweet men. Yeah. July 17th, maybe? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out why AJ, the second we left WWE, he got our bunks kicked. Uh, yeah, turned, yeah. turned into Do, a Do you know that? That's an excuse. That's an excuse. What? He, he, he re-renovated the tour bus and got rid of our beds. I don't think he missed us too bad. I almost feel like he knew it was coming. But no, I don't think he knew it was coming. But I will say this. I'll tell you who didn't know it was coming. The Undertaker who thanked us in his Hall of Fame speech. So thank you to him for saying that. We do appreciate it. I took, I took the Undertaker's final tombstone yep. ever. Which you is, sure did. Yeah. I mean deal. that that had to feel pretty special, regardless, yeah. right? Did you I mean, take it? Did you take it once, or were there multiple takes? One baby. Oh my uh, god! On a wet roof car. in the middle of the night, there's a it's a one and done. <laughs> machine one guns and done. a one take wonder, baby. Don't worry. But you know, you get a lot of credit for that. But he did throw me to my death, so I'm technically immortal like Hulk Hogan because I came right back to Impact Wrestling and talked to Sean Mania. Did you ever see where Hogan like took that first tombstone from Taker like early on? He missed by like 6 inches and then he was like, "Brother, he broke my neck. He jacked me up." Like <laughs> we love the Hawkster. We love the Taker on it. Sold Taker on it. Made Taker think that he actually heard him. Like claimed he spent the night in the hospital and Taker went back later on and was like, "Your head didn't even hit." What, what I know a really mean? funny story about that. I'll tell you offline from this, Sean. Okay. But I wasn't okay. supposed to hear. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, Impact Wrestling, like you mentioned, they are on fire. Like, I love this card. It's insane. Like, Macklin, uh, Saban, and Jay White is a match that I didn't know that I needed until it popped up. You've got Tasha Steeles emerging as the champion. you got Jonah and Ishii. And that's before we get into the Think about that match. match. Jonah and Ishii, and then you just said another one. Jay White, Bullet Club massive love for him but i mean i'm a steve macklin guy too. I love outside steve of macklin. our group and what a way that's an example of what impact's doing right now you see a guy like that who i won't say he was plucked from obscurity but he, he lost his teammates he lost his gig he lost his thing and then then he showed up and showed out i'm a fan it's very cool and that that's what you're seeing is this influx of people coming in from all these different places or these rising stars and uh, now they have one of the coolest platforms going to, to, to showcase that. So I think it's pretty badass. I keep saying that Macklin's style is like if you plop Rhino down in his prime in the middle of the X division and we're just like, yeah. go for it. Have at it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, exactly. We were joking the other day. I was like, you might as well just be called Stone Cold Steve Macklin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think it's cool because I'm, uh, he, you know, he got released when it, whenever he got released, right? And like he didn't just go off into obscurity. Like right. he... You know, he fought his he way up and he, worked. Yeah, he, he came out and he showed up. He showed up that he wanted to show out and, and work. And like you know, some people get, get released from from that place and they don't know what the fuck to do. I mean, it's yeah, like it's, that's that's when it's time to buckle up and get to work. And I mean, I'm I'm proud of yeah. him for doing that. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't even know him that well, but that's I like what him. that's what lacing your boots is all about, man. It's just not falling on your ass and staying down. We got the Impact Rebellion show. It is April 23rd in Poughkeepsie. Mid Hudson, see. 
I want to thank you guys so much for, for joining me. It's, it feels like I talk to you guys every, every three months, and we like it that way. I feel like yeah, I should yeah. talk to you guys in another three months. Hey, I'll call me when, uh, call me when this is over. <laughs> Until next time, guys, we're out. See you in three months, bud.